Robert Downey Jr. once shared my art on his Facebook page and directed people to my website. This was during my wild 15 minutes of fame, and this is the story of how it happened. In October of 2014, I decided to participate in Inktober, which is just a daily drawing challenge where you draw with an ink pen every day. For the subject of my Inktober, a friend at work suggested I draw the made-up movies from this old Reddit post, where people took one letter out of movies to create a different title. So like if you took the N out of Finding Nemo, you would get Finding Emo. Uh, this one was one of my favorites. So each day I drew one of those or came up with my own and wrote a little joke to go along with it and then I post it to my small Instagram page. Each day I got maybe 20, 30 likes each. Uh, at the end of Inktober I had 31 drawings of course, so that same friend suggested I put them all in a gallery and post that gallery to Reddit. Uh, I had never posted on Reddit before so he helped me create an account and we posted it early one morning before work and then the post exploded. It went to the front page of Reddit, then to the top of the front page. And at the time, the front page of Reddit was often called the front page of the internet. So many trending stories and bits of news and pop culture started there. Within a day, it had over three million views and thousands of comments. People wanted posters and shirts of my art. Others were offering to buy my sketchbooks. I mean, remember, this was like 20, 30 likes on each image when I posted them uh, on, on Instagram the month before. So I was not prepared. People were sharing the images everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It started getting picked up by random websites and publications like the Huffington Post, MTV, Esquire, the PGA. <laughs> like each day I woke up to random celebrities tweeting out images, including Molly Ringwald, Robert Downey Jr. Wes Craven started following me on Twitter. Uh, the show at midnight used it as a prompt for a round of improv. It was nuts. And this was different from going viral now when you can get a million views on TikTok and then next week it's like nothing happened. This is more like, like Bones Day or No Bones Day. Like it, it went on for weeks. Uh, people at work were wondering when I was going to quit my job and I was like, um, actually Reddit posts don't translate to dollars or uh, healthcare benefits, so I will continue to work here. But people online were saying they'd buy a book of them and I thought it would be a fun book to make. Uh, in fact, I'd always wanted to have a book. It was a life goal of mine to be able to one day go to Barnes & Noble and buy my own book off the shelf. Uh, but I always thought that would be a novel because I had made my living as a copywriter and I'd already written a young adult novel that I was trying to get published. Uh, so I never thought it'd be like some, some kind of art or coffee table book. Uh, anyway, I looked up who publishes fun like coffee table books and I found Chronicle Books. Uh, I found a general inquiry email address on one of their pages and I sent it an email, linked to my Reddit post and was like, I think this would make a good book. It got 3 million views in just a couple days. Uh, and the response time on the Chronicle Books website said it would be three months before uh, I heard anything back, if I heard anything back at all. But you know, I was like, whatever, shoot your shot. We'll, we'll just find out if, if this goes anywhere. And then I got an email back an hour later. Uh, it said, let's set up a phone call. Uh, a week after that, I had a book deal. It will be called Movie Title Typos. Uh, I was gonna take those 31 movies, add about 20 or so more, polish them up into finished illustrations and write some new jokes. They wanted to capitalize on the popularity of it going viral and get the book out the following year. So they asked me to make this book on a very tight timeline. I was paid a standard first book advance, which was $10,000, which uh, seems like a lot when you say it like that, but, uh, and it was for me at the time, I think uh, I paid off our car, but when you break that dollar amount down by hours worked over the following four months, <laughs> It's not great, we're not doing that math. Anyway, you shouldn't get into publishing to get rich. Uh, that's actually pretty hard to do. It's probably a whole nother video I could make. Anyway, at the time I was 30 years old, I had a three year old and a 13 month old. I would wake up at 6 a.m. when my wife left for work, draw until 8 a.m., take my kids to daycare, go to work, draw at lunch at work, get home around six, put my kids to bed at eight, then draw until 1 a.m. Uh, it was grueling. I did that for four months straight and uh, then I finished the book and in September of 2015 it came out. Here it is. Uh, yes, I did go to Barnes & Noble and buy a copy of my own book. Uh, it, it felt amazing. The coolest thing is I got to do a book signing at New York Comic Con uh, in October of 2015. Right before I left for my flight, I posted about the whole process on Reddit, thanking everyone for making this bucket list goal of mine happen. And that post went to the front page. The folks at Reddit actually reached out to me for an interview, which I did at Comic-Con. And because Comic-Con is filled with very online nerds, by the time my book signing was supposed to happen at the Chronicle Books booth, I had a huge line. I sold out of every book the publisher brought. 
it, it was awesome. Uh, I, I was just this goober who drew some pictures on the internet and I had this gigantic line like I was some kind of famous comic book artist. I took requests and drew pictures in the front of every single book I signed. It was just so much fun. One of the coolest things that's ever happened. So after that, life went back to normal. My book didn't sell through its advance, which most first time books don't. So when I pitched a sequel to the publisher, they said, no thanks. Uh, I went on to work as a copywriter and continued up the corporate ladder, but art started to become a part of what I did at my jobs. So I drew various things for the various companies I've worked at since then. Uh, ads, social media posts, I storyboarded commercials that I also wrote and then got to see them on TV, which was very cool. Uh, now I'm 40 years old, I work as the VP of content at a tech company where I manage a whole group of creative folks and occasionally I do still draw things for work. Uh, I didn't become super wealthy because of this and I haven't had another book published since then. Uh, though I do have a literary agent and we've come frustratingly close several times. But the whole thing was an incredible experience and it also gave me the confidence to pursue art more seriously. I'd always loved art and I've been drawing my entire life. but. My career was in writing, so to me, I was a writer who liked to draw. But all these stories that were shared online called me an artist, and I started meeting people in different industries and communities, and to them, I was an artist who liked to write. And that perspective shift had a profound impact on me. If you go to my website now, it just says that I'm a professional creative person because that's basically what I am. I am creative for a living, and I get to manage and help other people be creative for a living too, and that's super cool. In the years since, I got some pretty cool art gigs, like the time I drew chocolate bars for Marshawn Lynch or this science girl mascot for the CDC. I even got asked to develop the art for a pilot for a children's show about a pizza food truck. Uh, it never got made, but it was still a blast to work on. Oh, and I also started a business called IWillDrawYourDog.com and ran that for five years where I drew hundreds of dogs. I'd love to have more books published because I just like making art and stories that make people smile. But if that was my full 15 minutes of fame, it was a hell of a ride. And it's not like the book is gone. You can still buy it on Amazon and I am still proud of it. So many of the jokes actually still hold up. Uh, like this one, T, the extraterrestrial. A boy meets an aggressive yet well-meaning jewelry clad alien who pities fools. <laughs> or this one, Harry Otter. A young boy finds out who and what he is. Magic ensues. Uh, this one, some of them I like, drew comics with and this one had a comic. You're a wizard, Harry. I am? Yeah, and uh, you're also an otter. What? <laughs> so stupid. Uh, this whole story is fun to sometimes bring up at parties or work events where people don't know. Uh, that and the time I spent 30 minutes on the phone with Taylor Swift, but that's a different video. Anyway, this book came out nine years ago and the original art went viral 10 years ago. So I thought it'd be fun to go down memory lane and revisit my 15 minutes of fame. Thanks for taking the trip with me and stick around if you like cool art.